Hello my friends, this is Anna Hazelnut, and today we're going to join Anna on her process towards attempting a 9 meter high climb with a crux at the very top. Anna is an experienced professional trad climber, so when she first reached Magicwood, she was inclined towards trying the very famous highball blue sky of mine. It's a 6A climb with a couple of introductory crimps into some jugs and is the perfect introduction to high boulders. She quickly took notice of a climb that's just next to it, a boulder which has seen little to no repetitions and where the first ascensionist only could manage it on rope. The idea of doing it without a rope and on pads seems absurd to most of us, but to Anna it was nothing short of a perfect challenge and she wanted to let us all in on the journey. The crux of this climb combines moving from a slopey two-finger crimp and mantling off of a non-existent edge, and due to its delicate nature a heel hook has to be placed on an edge to provide enough balance to do the move. This move is at an astounding 7 meters height, and the free fall you'll take there is nothing that most people would dare to do more than once. Because of this, Anna started working the route on rope, as the first goal she had was to do it ground up on rope like the first ascensionist. Let's go. Let's go. Except we have a few things missing from the bag. <laughs> <laughs> this is um my rope protector. <laughs> this is a towel. It works. How does the crux feel? What's the thing that goes through your mind? Okay, the crux is so cool. It's like, I mean, the reason I'm trying this climb and like actively trying it and want to do it ground up without a rope is because the movement is so awesome. The crux is like, and I've never really done this on a slab. I always joke like I don't put heels up on slabs, but it's this weird high heel on a slab. And then you just have to like fully lock off and press until like the tips of your fingers are on this like little edge and then kind of lunge, or if I'm lucky, statically grab a two-finger pocket crystal thing. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And it's just like a move that I thought the first, I think it took two sessions um, of just complete, like I just didn't know what to do at all. Like <laughs> I, I was trying different betas, I was there like dangling for an hour here, hour there, and I was just like, I just can't figure this out at all. And on the third session, I had the idea to put a heel on and I like tried it and it's still like my heel would like fall right off and I bang my knee against the rock and it was just so painful. And I was like, I don't even know if this is going to work. And it's really cool the moment it clicked and I was like, whoa, I think I figured out the beta that works for me. And I think this is actually possible. Yeah. This is like the worst thing. How was that? Very good. <laughs> yeah, it started off kind of rough and I was 
cursing the temps. I was like, oh, it feels bad. Okay, there she is. <laughs> um, but I don't know, I, I guess I started getting into the flow of things and I found a few like micro betas that I'm really excited about. Yeah. Where were they? So here when I get to like the, the jug of the climb, so the biggest ledge on the climb, I realized I can like, like I'm pretty spread out and my arms are low so I can like actually rest and re-chalk up, which is really good. Uh, the last time I was trying it, I was trying to re-chalk up on smaller edges and I think I was just like walking off and wasting energy. So that's really good. And then the second one was for the crux move uh, when I'm rocking on the heel. The first crimp, I, take, I have to take with the first two fingers to like really get a good grip on it. Um, and then to catch the pocket with the middle two fingers. And that's like the ideal way to do it, I think. The pocket's not as important. I can, I can make it work with these and with that, but the first hold for sure is the first two fingers. All right guys, so I'm just gonna showcase some of the holds real quick that Anna's pulling on, brushing them up for a little bit. So here's the next thing we're gonna look at. It's this crimp. It's the one she's going off of. See, it's about slopey, maybe one quarter pad crimp. That's the hole she's going off of. Don't worry, there's a much better one down there. Look, it's a jug. It might be a tiny jug. Oops, it's much better. See this you can fit almost, also quarter pad, but you can fit four fingers on it. Except up here it's maybe three millimeters, so it's not very good. And then she locks off towards the top. Oh, and lastly, here's the really, really good heel hook. It's about almost a full pad, but not really. That's the one she heel hooks from. Let's hope she does it. How do you feel? Are you nervous for the top rope attempt now? The top rope attempt? Oh, no. No. Not so nervous about that. I'm okay. actually not even that nervous generally because, like, just... I'll try my best, and if it feels good, then I'll go from there. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't like to overthink things or take things too far in advance. I feel like that really like destroys the process of it, and I just like to enjoy the climb. So I really want to get it on top rope, but I don't, I don't have really any expectation just because it is so hard. And then I'll just deal with that if I like if I do it. I'll deal with that thought process and weigh the consequences and see if it's worth it for me when I get there. Good work. But there's no need. I think people have been like telling me like, wow, it's so scary. And I'm like, I'm just on top rope. And they're like thinking beyond mm -hmm. to the to the solo. And I'm just like, I want to do it ground up. Don't get me wrong. But it's just like, that's not where I'm at yet. Yeah. Um, but I'm getting close and that's very exciting. Right. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> okay. What? What's going on? I, I, I figured out that, that I need my pointer finger right there because, oh, oh shit. Okay, okay, cohesive words. All right, we'll take it in a second. Just do the move again, cruise it, and we'll talk later. Just happened <laughs> what happened it's just like it's entered the realm of of extremely possible at this moment because if that move can feel that static consistently it's game over like ah <laughs> uh, that just like took away so much uncertainty what was the key so um on the little like razor edge crimp i thought that if i put my pointer finger on the best part of the hold and then these three fingers followed that was the best way to grab that hold um, but turns out I put my pointer finger on kind of like less ideal spot this one moves to the best hold and these two move on to the hold a bit more where there's a bit 
like more pressing. So when I press, I can like feel it, my pinky really taking a lot of the load, whereas before it was just on like the, the tiniest micro edge. And now it's on like slightly bigger micro edge. <laughs> and that just apparently made all of the difference. Ugh, cause instead of it being like, maybe sometimes it feels really easy. And sometimes it feels like I have to actually dynamically lunge to it. And that's fine if you're like on a rope, but if you're highballing and it's at the top, like you just don't want a moment where you have to be that dynamic. So I'm like so psyched. I'm <laughs> gonna try it. Yeah, crush it. Crush it. <laughs> but on rope, right? On rope. <laughs> <laughs> first things first. Oh my come god, on, come, yeah, on. Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, come on. Woohoo! Woo! Woo! Oh, oh! <laughs> Okay, so now that I know it's possible, and like not only that it's possible, but that it was so in control, I I feel so much more confident, and I really want to try it um, ground up, like without a rope. So I think maybe lap it a few more times today, just to like feel it out, and then tomorrow, tomorrow go for it. Nice. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Oh, so good. <gasps> After finally having succeeded with the top rope descent, she wanted to make sure the entire climb was well dialed before mentally preparing to do it without the rope. However, she couldn't manage to repeat it and even ended up getting stuck on the crux of the route for the rest of the evening. That was hard. Unfortunately, a storm that was predicted to arrive two days later came one day early. And as Anna only had one more day to go in the forest, it seemed like all hope was lost. However, out of nowhere, a small three hours window opened up on the morning after, and Anna, against all odds, seemed to have another chance at trying the route again. Yeah! Fuck yeah! Twice in a row now? Twice in a row, let's go! One more time? Yeah! Yeah! Fuck! <laughs> Having done the crux several times in a row, she finally felt confident enough to give it a ground up attempt.
Oh my god, my heart's beating like a freaking toaster. <laughs> yeah, so I fell off of the crux, <laughs> which is like realistically the highest I'll fall from, and I'm like totally fine. <laughs> Jeez, how do you feel? <laughs> I want to go again. Really? <laughs> okay. I'd have to brush, I'll brush all the holds again. Uh huh. Um, take like a chill after that, make sure. Like, yeah, you're in the right zone. Everything's okay, yeah, but. Yeah. <sighs> cool. Alright, one more go, I guess. After the first fall, we all thought it was over but Anna decided to give it another attempt. Come on. Small droplets were starting to come down from the skies as she was on her way up, and ultimately... <laughs> Whoa! She fell after having done the crux. With the rainstorm approaching steadily, Anna took little to no rest, hopped on the route again for a last day, last go attempt at realizing the route. Come on. Come on. You got this. Yeah, come on, Anna. Come on. Just a little bit more. Come on. Come on. Fucking. Yes! Yes! Wild! Freaking raining! Oh, that was amazing! <laughs> wild. Freaking wild. I can't believe I did that. Oh my god, I just fucking did it. <laughs> Take it all in. This moment's yours. The end was wet. <laughs> the end, I was like on the mantle. Like I saw. I was so nervous for you. When I got the hole, so statically. Yeah. I like took an extra little second to just like lean a little bit more and make sure that when I grabbed it, it was as static as possible so I could get like the perfect two fingers on because I was like, I'm not dropping this again here. The fact that I got another chance today because it wasn't raining when it said it was gonna, yeah. because yesterday obviously it rained and it's just, I just felt so grateful to have a chance to go ground up and just sending it. I, I, I totally wrote it off yesterday. Oh, okay. I'm ready to go home. <laughs> yeah. All right, you behind the screen. Before you leave, I have a quick announcement to make. For a while, me and Cordy have been planning to start up a Patreon, and it's finally happened. On it, we're gonna have a monthly podcast where we're gonna discuss climbing, training, and all kinds of shenanigans. We've recorded the first one where we chatted a bunch about the competition season and some uh, behind the life of living in a van, stuff like that. And there also is gonna be a lot of training goals that I'm trying to achieve, as well as some uncut footage uh, from red point attempts on the projects that are on the channel and kind of like a little bit of, I guess early access to how things are going uh, before I release the bigger videos 
and uh, a chance for you guys to give some input on what kind of content you want to see on the channel. I have a lot of ideas and I need help sorting out which ones to prioritize. Um, I don't want this to take too much of the video, so I wanted to have this at the end. I'll do a, a longer explanation later in another video, uh, kind of addressing why the Patreon is a necessary step. But for me, it's like the biggest and most important step forward to making the channel more sustainable. Uh, it's been a couple of months of uh, financial setbacks here and there, and it's just gonna be a really good and fun way for me to make money and hopefully for you guys to get more fun content that you enjoy watching. So if you wanna support that, there's a link in the description and then I guess in the comments down below to help lead you to it. And I don't know, I would be incredibly grateful for anyone who's willing to contribute to that and help support me in this, uh, in this endeavor of making videos here on YouTube. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was freaking insane to watch Anna crush it. I had so much fun filming it and so much fun editing it. And I suppose I'll see you in the next video. Bye, my friends.